Welcome back to Sip the Tally Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans. And today, January 13th, 2024, these are the four things that crossed my desk that I wanted to bring to you today. But before we get started, I want to remind you that I do have a bracket challenge going. Go to my community tab, fill out your bracket, send it to me via email, and that way you, you can be assured if you win, you can get one of, no, not one, all of these prizes that I have for you. One being the Purple Kool-Aid Chalice, two being a shot glass from the round table meet and greet, three being a black long sleeve hoodie with the FTMF logo on it, similar to the one I have on now, not this one, but a solid black one. So let's get started on today's four things that I saw that came across my desk. First up, Mark Andrews returned to practice on Friday evening. Even though he had a visible limp, he was able to return to the practice field with the potential of playing next week in the divisional round or the conference championship next the week after. It's a welcoming sight for the Ravens, players, fans, and coaches alike. The offenses look different since Mark Andrews went down. A lot of players have become involved. Third downs have been less predictable. And Isaiah's likeliest emergence has really become a welcoming sight as a Baltimore Ravens fan. Likely has proven with this opportunity that he can be a very reliable threat in the modern NFL. And before Mark Andrews went down, he had the stats of 45 catches, 545 yards, and six touchdowns. The second thing that came across my desk, Odell restructures his deal. Now, you guys know I'm a huge, huge Odell fan. I was a fan of his before he came to Baltimore, became even a bigger fan since he's gotten here. And now, you know, I've openly admitted that when it comes to capology, I'm not the best. Void years, signing bonus, dead money, all of those terms make my head hurt. It's like a just a, a bunch of words that don't really register with me a lot of times. But I do know a good deal when I see one. Baltimore and Odell have agreed on a contract restructuring, according to Raven's salary cap on Twitter, uh, that removed the void years from his one-year $18 million deal uh, that he signed back in April. Now, I think, well, I thought that if we win the Super Bowl, he would probably retire because, you know, he got little nicks in his body and they always kind of pop up. You know, anytime something don't really go according to plan. Maybe this opens the door for a return or just with his experience in Baltimore, maybe he's trying to give them a little relief, even if he does not decide to play, whether we win it or not. Uh, the removal of the void years, according to Raven's salary cap, allows for Baltimore to add some cap relief in the 2024 offseason while pushing off his guaranteed money due date back to March 14th. This will allow the two sides to negotiate a new deal if they want to. Now, what I want you to do is, if you want Odell to return next season, drop a three in the comment section. Put those threes up. The third thing that came across my desk, we talked about this in link yesterday on a separate video. The Ravens have some all pros. Now, this is the real list. We've already seen the PFF all pro and the NFL PA all pro. Well, the AP all pro is the one that kind of people put in their contract. If you make this list, you get XYZ, and you kind of have incentives to go along with it. Now, we had five people to make the all-pro team. Lamar Jackson at quarterback, Roquan Smith at linebacker, Kyle Hamilton at safety, all made first-team all-pro. Justin Matter BK at defensive line, Pat Queen at linebacker, made second-team all-pro. Now, Lamar Jackson was the all-pro quarterback on all three teams, the NFL PA, the PFF, and the AP all-pro, which kind of points to me that he's probably going to be the MVP. Uh, in his first year with Todd Munkin, and, like, he's been lights out for the most of the year. Now, the big pundits say he don't have the numbers. Watch the games, bro. Watch the games. And you, most of the big pundits have, all, have played football, and they know what it looks like, but they just need talking points to kind of go against Somebody's just sitting aside, sitting on the other side of the desk from them. He's the MVP. And the stuff that um, Stu Gott said, the goalpost always moves for Lamar. Always. 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 So I'm not going to even address Stu Gott because I'm just not going to address it. Let's move on. Let's move on. Um, Matabika and Queen making the all pro in contract years sets up big 
paydays for those two guys. Now, whether those paydays are going to be in Baltimore or somewhere else, who knows? We may end up losing both of those guys. Not just one, both of them. Now, I'm sure one of them will probably be franchise tag, probably Matt BK, if they don't reach a long-term deal. But with both of them making all pro, first or second team, we're probably going to lose both of those because that is a huge leveraging piece when it comes to negotiating a contract. Now, it's I want to close this out with my picks for a super wild card weekend. And we'll start with just today's games on this Saturday. Um, first, we want to start with the Houston Texans and the Cleveland Browns. Everything inside of me wants to say Houston Texans. I love what the D'Amico Ryans is better than Houston. I like C.J. Stroud. I like the defense they're having. A young, exciting team. But, but, they don't have Tank Dale, who was having an amazing rookie season. And we all know that Cleveland loves to play cover one, man to man, put everything in the box, put everything else in the box, and see if you can block Miles Garrett. Now, Houston does have Tunsil at left tackle, but they don't always line Miles Garrett up on the right side. They put Miles Garrett everywhere else. So can those other four guys block Miles Garrett and keep him off CJ Stroud before their receivers can get open? I don't think so. Now I think Nico Collins will get his. And I think they'll be able to run the ball a little bit. But I think Cleveland's defense is just too good for the Houston Texans to go in there and get a victory. So in this game, as much as I want to pick Houston, and as much as I like what uh, D'Amico is building there, I got to go with the Cleveland Browns in this game because of their defense. Joe Flacco has the offense playing pretty efficient. And the defense plus what Flacco is doing with the offense, I got to go Cleveland here. And it pains me to say that being a Ravens fan. Next up, the Miami Dolphins versus the Kansas City Chiefs. This may be the snowball part two. <laughs> uh, wind chill is expected to be minus 30 with zero degree temperatures being the normal. I may just wear a jacket in the house watching the game because it's going to be so cold at this game. Now, this is the Peacock game, so a lot of people may or may not see it. Hopefully, you can find a way to watch it. And if you can't, sorry. <laughs> sorry. But, um... I was thinking Tyreek would go to Kansas City and just rip them up, being that, you know, the departure and wanting to go back and get some revenge and whatnot. But with these temperatures, man, throwing the ball is going to be tough. It's going to be extremely difficult to throw the ball with the wind, with the cold, uh, trying to stay warm and, and, and all that different stuff. So with that being said, the team that runs the ball best is probably going to win this game. I personally think the Dolphins have a better run game. I think it's more diverse. I think their O-line is better. I think their coach is willing to run it more. I think Andy Reid may be forced to run the ball more because you know Andy Reid loves to throw the ball around. But overall, I think the Dolphins have the better run game. So with that being said, I think the Miami Dolphins go into Arrowhead and pull off the upset. Because they have the more diverse run game and they are willing to run the ball to get a victory. They also, you know, throw a play action or two in there. And I think Tyreek Hill can take a little quick screen because the DBs are probably playoff, make a guy miss and go to the house. Because with that, you don't have to throw the ball way down the field. Now, with that, to negate that, KC may press. And you don't need but one or two. Like you may. In the snap of the ball, if the wind slows up just enough for Tua to get it past the DB, Tyreek will run past him in the sand, in the snow, uh, in lava, <laughs> in the water. <laughs> so it don't matter what the what's on the ground. Tyreek going to run past whatever DB is out there. So it don't take much. So if you want to come up and say, okay, well, you can't throw because of the, the um, wind, so be it. Just get Tyreek the ball four or five times in space and see what he can do. Other than that, run the ball because you do have a diverse run game. You can get outside, you can get inside, but stay away from Chris Jones. Stay away from Chris Jones and hold on to the ball. So I will say this, turnovers will be a key factor in this game, but I think the Dolphins can run the ball, and I'm picking the Dolphins to go into Arrowhead and win the game. And that's all I have for you on today, which is January 13th, 2024. 
Uh, if this is your first time here, like the video. If you really like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and hit that bell so you can be notified when the rest of this content drops for the 2023 season, even though it's 2024. I appreciate you guys for coming through, and I'll see y'all soon. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Playoff, baby.